and gentlemen, welcome to episode 47 of PD's Awesome Guest Paddle, and tonight's guest is a really cool one, because tonight we have a voice actor, composer, voice and uh, sound effect uh, editor. He is a Nickelodeon legend, as he worked on many shows such as The Wild Thornberry, Rugrats, Avril Monsters. He was actually the voice of uh, characters on Avril Monsters, such as Crumb, Horvac, and of course The Snorch. My guest at this time is Mr. David Echo. David, how are you today, sir? I'm doing great. I'm pleased to report. Cool. And with me here today is, uh, once again, coming back for a return is uh, my good friend, uh, special guest co-host for tonight's episode, and that is Christopher Patty. Hey, yo. All right. Uh, now, uh, David, before we get into the Our Real Monsters question, I do have, uh, like, a couple of uh, questions, of course. Um, can you tell us what uh, the, the duties and responsibility are as sound and voice editor? Oh, uh, well, uh, I did sound effects and dialogue editing. And for the dialogue editing, and then after all the recordings, and you put all the text into the computer. And playing with it. And that was a damn good job. I really enjoyed doing that too. I did that. I did a lot of that on Rugrats. Oh, very cool. And uh, you worked on many different projects. And uh, Christopher, you have a question for David, correct? Uh, yeah. Uh, what are some of your memories working in the sound department, particularly for one of our all time favorite video games, Metal Gear Solid? Oh, Metal Gear Solid. Uh, Actually, uh, Kurt Vanzo brought me on with that one uh, to do some background sounds. Um, and actually, I did that one at home. That wasn't that wasn't at Class Chupo. Didn't have anything to do with Nickelodeon. It was just on the side. And at the time, uh, uh, you know, video games are just you know big, forty k rumbles and stuff. So we put them in there. You know, like a like a, the ambient sound of a spaceship in Alien or or something. Just rattling and rumbling and engines in the distance. So I, I did stuff like that. Very cool. And uh, what were your memories working on the sound department for uh, Duckman? I was on the USA Network, which was the home to, like, wrestling and uh, not much else. So not a lot of people saw Duckman on the original, the original broadcast. But I'm pretty proud of it because they did a lot of good stuff. And the actors were really good, too. They brought in a lot of good people. And Jason was pretty amazing, too. Cool. Like, uh, like Duckman, in every episode, he would, have, uh, he would have these rants that go on for a page and a half. And a lot of guest stars, too. They brought in a lot of big people that they knew from, oh, I don't know, Moonlighting, stuff like that. The shows that Ron and Jeff were on before. But it was good. It was always funny. I see. And uh, Christopher, you have another question for David? What are some of your memories, David, in uh, working on uh, the uh, wacky adventures of Ronald McDonald, Sacred Silly, or sorry, Scared Silly? <laughs> yeah, I got, to <laughs> I got to be a bear. And uh, I think I had one line in that whole uh thing. <laughs> Maybe some roaring, because I think I was chasing him, uh, the Ronald McDonald bunch, and uh, just going to go <laughs> run after him. Uh, I still got it on VHS somewhere. <laughs> that was a weird one. And uh, yeah, Mother's Bot did the music and stuff on that, too, I think. Okay. And uh, what were your memories working on the Wild Thornberries? I didn't do a whole lot of Thornberries. I did a little bit. Uh, I think I played uh, a rhino one time, <laughs> and and maybe something else. I don't know, but uh, yeah, Tim was on that show too. That guy was a lot of fun. Awesome, uh, Chris. Next question. Uh, what are some of your memories working on Rocket Power? Rocket Power. Oh my God! I was a uh, uh, I did the music on that. Mother's Bob had the title sequence, and he and uh, he and his brother Bob did some like regular surf kind of tunes that I cut in sometimes. But that was my first thing doing like composing stuff. 
like as a full-time deal. And I don't know, I felt a little over my head sometimes. Uh, when it was going well, it was like the greatest feeling in the world, but I really enjoy doing it. And I'm proud of a lot of this stuff on there. Like, I don't know, thrash, a little bit of hip hop and uh, surf music. I was like, all right, I can barely pull those off. Okay, I'll do that. <laughs> And that was a fun show. It was fast. Cool. One of my, uh, mine and Christopher's favorite show that you did will always be Ah Real Monsters. And of course, you as Crumb nailed it though. Like I love, I mean, we all have a soft spot for Crumb. He, it, despite being a monster, he's such a soft-hearted, sweet-hearted uh, uh, creature though. And that's why we love Crumb though. And I just wanted to get your memories on working on Ah Real Monsters and of course working as Crumb. Well, uh, that was hands down the best job I ever had being Crumb. Uh, and I had a lot of good jobs, uh, but that was just, it was, it was amazing being in there with uh, Charlie and Christine. And uh, it's just playing. I mean, you, you, they get you the script the night before and you just kind of run through it and iron out the parts that might feel funny and then in the the next day you just go in there and play for a few hours and it's a uh, best feeling in the world especially with a you know I, I hadn't done a whole lot of acting before and you would think uh an actor that hadn't do, done a whole lot before you put them next to really experienced actors you would think it would make the the rookie look worse but <laughs> But it's kind of the opposite. You know, they, they, they kind of pick you up a bit. You, you do better work when you're working with really good people. And I was working with really good people. So it was a blast. Very cool. And now, Chris, before you ask your question, though, uh, Mr. Echo, can, this, this is just the kid in me, though, because I grew up watching you. I mean, both Chris and I grew up watching you as a kid. But can we get a little crumb right now? Yeah, hey, Pete. <laughs> <laughs> Awesome. Uh, Christopher, your next question. Uh, did you have much input uh, for the Crumb character when you did his voice? Um, uh, the writing was so good in the beginning. So, um, and if I started to drift a little bit, Chuck or one of the directors would, you know, line me back up. And, uh, yeah, every, everybody was free to play, though. I mean, to play around with it. It was a very, uh, very creative atmosphere, um, which kind of amazed me. You would think that there would be a lot of egos who were like, no, do it the way I said. But there was very little of that. Uh, they wanted you to play. And they, they didn't care where the good ideas came from, as long as they were good. <laughs> hey, good to know is uh, less hostile of a work environment than some other areas in show business, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it does get much worse than that, I've heard. <laughs> uh, David, I do have a question, though, because you mentioned uh, Chris, the late great Christine Cavanaugh, and of course, Charlie Adler before, but uh, I want to get your thoughts working with the, the, the whole cast, though, like working with Christine, uh, uh, Charlie, Greg Berger, and of course, Tim Curry. Yeah, well, uh, if, uh, since it was kind of an ensemble with the three of us, and sometimes with, with scenes with the Gromble, it would be the four of us, uh, they'd put us all in the room at the same time so we could play off of each other. Uh, but mainly the bulk of the script, it would be Charlie and Chris and I in the room doing all that at the same time. And uh, couldn't really ask for better people to work with. Um, and Christine especially uh, uh, the stuff she did for Chucky was just kind of mind blowing I mean the kind of stuff she came up with could only have come out of her head was, uh, that was quite a character cool uh, Chris your next question uh, what was your favorite ah real monsters episode you recorded Oh, episode. Wow. Hmm. Well, I can think of the 
two most traumatic ones. Uh, <laughs> uh, the, 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 the first day of recording, they, uh, they throw me in the booth with George Siegel, right? From Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf? <laughs> and I, I hadn't done much acting at all, so I was a little intimidated. That was, uh, that was a little scary. And then like the second or third episode, they go, all right, now you play your dad. So what does that sound like? Do that. And, you know, I, I was already kind of scraping the bottom of my vocal range, so I couldn't just go way lower. Uh, but we made it work. We made it work. A little pitch shifting, a little screaming. <laughs> I haven't watched him in a long time. Uh, my folks gave me the whole set on DVD, so it might be time to revisit him. Very cool. And um, yeah. what, any fun or like a funny and or cool uh, behind the scenes story you could share uh, while we're doing recording for Our Real Monsters? Behind the scenes. Uh, man, it was a lot of fun because when you're, when you're waiting around to go in the booth, there's a, there's a whole bunch of actors at the table right outside there. And they've all got stories and jokes and are really like relaxed and playful. So pretty much everybody that was part of those shows was, I don't know, a lot of fun to hang out with. Just, and a lot of big names because people seem to want to do voiceover. <laughs> so big names that are really big, you wouldn't expect to be bothered with something like that I would just come on in and do their thing. So it was pretty great. I see. Uh, Christopher? Pete and myself have also been super fans of the Rugrats. What are some of your memories doing work for that show? Rugrats. Uh, well, like, like they would have Charlie and Chris and I in the room for, for uh, the ensemble stuff and monsters. It, they would have uh, Cats, you see, and uh, Ichi Daly and Christine, and sometimes, and Angelica as well, uh, Cheryl Chase. And they were fun to watch. I mean, they were like really attractive women doing these funny voices. <laughs> You'd look in the booth, and uh, it was pretty amazing. Oh, I see. Um... Now, uh, you reprised your Crumb character in Rugrats in episode Ghost Stories, where everyone from Our Real Monsters, you know, comes back for one time only. Uh, what were your memories doing that episode of Rugrats? Oh, yeah, that was, that was kind of unexpected. Uh, um, we still did it as the two ensembles, because you couldn't really get, like, seven or eight people all mic'd up at the same time. So I did my thing with... Uh, Christine and Charlie, and then uh, and then the other Rugrats would come in and do their deal. Uh, but yeah, that was a good crossover. It was fun for, for all those characters to meet after being uh, in the same building for so many years. <laughs> and for the longest time, back when I was a kid, I always had this vision of the crossover between them. I didn't really necessarily envision it like that, but eh. Hey, it worked in its own way. What were some of your memories uh, doing the voice of the monster in the episode Monster Under Chucky's Bed? Oh, yeah. I think that was an <laughs> another single line thing. What, what, what did I say? Something like boo or, or hello. <laughs> you said, uh, come on down, Chucky. I got ice cream for you. Oh, God, that's right. I remember now. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that was a little weird scaring Chucky because Chucky's like one of the most adorable characters in cartoon history. And there's nobody like that guy. Uh, that was good. That was, that was an honor. Um, I do have a question, though, because in an audio commentary episode of Simpsons, Kurt Douglas one time said that uh, he hated doing recording while using headphones, though. I want to know, uh, from your perspective as a voice uh, voice actor, what are your what's your opinion on using headphones during recording session? Uh, most of us don't use the headphones because uh, you you can hear yourself just fine, and uh, people people sound different. They they do different vocals 
when they're wearing headphones. I know this as an as an audio engineer, even if you're singing, you kind of quiet down because you can hear yourself a little too well. And so you want to be uh, uh, projecting at kind of a normal level. So most of us do not bother with the headphones unless they want to play us something and get a voice match. Like, here, you did this voice two years ago. Here's what it sounds like. And you go, oh, okay. And uh, yeah, headphones, if you can avoid using them, you do. Unless you're playing the backup tracks. If you're doing a singing and you don't want the backing tracks to go into the microphone, then you have the headphones on. Well, uh, so uh, IMDb doesn't showing you doing anything in, in the 2010s or the current 2020s. Are there any projects you've been working on lately? You know, are you taking a sabbatical from show business? Uh, I haven't been doing that much. I audition for stuff sometimes. I got one in the morning. Um, I've been keeping busy doing a little bit of music and uh, doing stuff for around the outside of the house. Uh, we're up in the mountains now. And so there's a lot of stuff to be done around here. Uh, I had to bury an owl last week. That was sad, but. <laughs> and I'm digging out this pit of dirt. There was like this uh, 15 by five concrete thing that, this house is from the thirties. So it may have been like a little swimming hole or something so i'm just shoveling it out <laughs> that's what i do now i shovel dirt and play music getting into piano a little bit more nothing wrong with living a low-key humble life oh yeah yeah it's working thus far uh, especially now that it's unadvisable to leave the house which, uh, so we've been just kind of laying low for almost a year. And it'll be time to get out and about soon enough. Once the vaccines start flying. Um, what, what was your favorite crumb line? Favorite crumb line. Oh, once again, I should have prepared because there were some good ones. Oh, they wrote some really funny stuff for crumb. Oh. No, oh, damn, I don't know. I like being I like being smelly. <laughs> That's all I can think of. <laughs> One of my favorite lines you delivered though was the episode where Ickis gets the, the watch from the Grumble and he turns back time and then Crumb delivers this incredible like intellectual line though where he goes he go where Ickis goes uh, what could possibly, what's the worst that could possibly happen? And you go, well, you could destroy the very fabric of time, you know, and doom in all society. And then there was a long pause, and you go, or not. Oh, I remember <laughs> that now. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Chris, do you have any, um, uh, any other questions? Uh, I don't suppose you've ever had, like, uh, like any kids maybe uh, looking up to your character or with the idea... Uh, of just, uh, I don't know, bathing less and having pride of being less smelly at all, have you? Or being more smelly? I was talking to somebody and this, and this little kid just goes, it's crumb, sounds like crumb. <laughs> Which I was amazed because I was not expecting that at all. And, and if you had to choose, uh, David, between um, voiceover, doing voiceover work or sound and uh, dialogue editor, which would you say was the more fun to do? Uh, I don't know. I felt a little out of my depth occasionally doing the voiceover stuff. Chrome was easy because Chrome was just like, I was at home doing Chrome. But a couple of other characters, you know, I'm, I'm, I may have a more limited range than other actors. <laughs> it's possible. But uh, I did really enjoy doing sound effects editing. That was really fun. Just like building track of, after track of stuff on Duckman and uh, the Rugrats movie. That's, that's a lot of fun. And you, if you don't have a sound, you grab the tape machine and you just go out and get it. 
Yeah, I mean, another moment of calm that I love, and Chris, do you remember this one where Akis gets a dog, and then you, in the awesome calm voice you do, Mr. Echoes, you st you sing the song Akis and Fungus, and it goes like this. Akis and Fungus, Akis and Fungus. Oh. <laughs> He's not a virus. <laughs> Don't call him Bustual. Monsters and dogs rule. You know, uh, Chuck Swenson came up with that. Uh, he was one of the executive producers on the show. And he also had done the Harry Nilsson uh, special, The Point, in the 70s. And so uh, Drew Newman heard that. And Drew Newman is a composer extraordinaire. He really knows what he's doing. And he's got quite a lot of gear. <laughs> so that was a lot of fun doing that. And singing. It's always fun to sing. Awesome. Everyone should sing, whether they're good at it or not. Agreed. And uh, memories of your time working as the Snorch. Snorch, well, uh, <laughs> it was basically trying not to bust up when Tim was doing his thing. Because, uh, you know, Snorch just went, <laughs> there wasn't a whole lot to it. Uh, um, uh, Tim's character, Zimbo, he, I, I think he described him as like an Argentine gigolo or something. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, that guy was a blast to work with. He always came up with really interesting, funny stuff. And that was a treat, working with that guy. He does have a range, <laughs> Tim Curry. He's got quite a range, as does Charlie. Cool. Now, what, what, um, the voice director for our, our monsters, it was Charlie, right? Uh, no, no. Uh, I think Chuck directed most of them. Uh, but the individual directors of the animation would direct the voice as well. And so uh, the different directors that we had there would direct us. And uh, they always had good ideas. Because these are visual guys. So they, they, they really know what they're looking for visually and can, and can describe what they want audio-wise. Charlie moved into the directing, I think, right after. Because at, at that time, I was doing Rocket Power. And I didn't know what else was going on. Uh, I was just at home with the keyboards and guitars and stuff. <laughs> Very cool. Um, uh, Chris, do you have uh, any f final questions before we conclude? Well, with reboots and revivals sort of uh, being a, a normal thing in show business these days, a any chance you'd probably come back for Our Real Monsters if it's a uh, reboot or revival? Oh, yeah, if they want me, I'm there for it. But I, I, I kind of thought the, the idea of a reboot is you kind of reimagine stuff and you change the characters a little bit. And so it probably wouldn't be me, but I'd be into it. I'm here. <laughs> Maybe they could have me do something different. I don't know. I'm into it. Maybe Crum, Oblina, and Ickes, it could all be parents, and it would be just uh, their children being the main characters. Who knows? Yeah. Yeah. You should pitch that. That's a good idea, Chris. I'll yeah. Up. Write it up. Send it on in. <laughs> I mean, why not? They did Muppet Babies. Why not I'll Real Monster Babies? I think they're rebooting Rugrats now. I think Gabor and Arlene and Paul are working on that now. Well, I may remember the All Grown Up uh, series, which didn't do as well, unfortunately. But, um, yeah, I do kind of actually wonder or like, uh, what they're going to be doing right now with its uh, new reboot. Oh, I have no idea. Uh, um, they're probably still figuring it out right now. Uh, having the head writer figure uh, the grand vision of how it's going to be. 
Now, uh, before we conclude, uh, Dave, um, because this is an open forum, though, this is the part where I allow all my guests to talk about. They could they could say anything they want. They could talk about all they uh, anything they want. The floor is now yours, sir. Oh, hmm. Once an, uh, yet another missed opportunity that I could have prepared for. Uh, I, I'm really lucky to, be, to have fallen in with Plasky Chupo uh, when I did. I just moved to LA like a few months before, maybe three months before, and uh, I got hired for this HBO special, Alexander and the Terrible, Horrible, No Good, Very Bad Day, which was just a single half hour for HBO. But my first day on the job there, they had just gotten the first Simpsons footage back from Korea and were freaking out because it was the first episode and you know they had a lot of work to do it was this is the first time they'd ever done that and so I got to watch this company with Gabor and Arlene and I think I was employee number 49 and uh that I would wish for any young person to to have just this really young creative environment that's open to new ideas like that for people I see. And, you know, before we conclude, I just want to say, too, that the premise of my show has always been, like, not not for fame or fortune or anything, but mainly because I love to interview people I grew up watching and to give my thanks, to show my appreciation and thanks for those childhood memories that all these voice actors and actors gave to me. And it's a way of my, my way of saying thanking you, Dave, like, because, you know, those memories you gave me watching Our Real Monsters, the memories you gave Christopher watching Our Real Monsters, we can't thank you enough for all those childhood memories you gave us. Like, giving. You know, that's why I said in, in, in uh, the top of the show that you are a Nickelodeon legend. And, of course... Um, I do want to, you know, and, uh, with something I, I've waited a long time to do and I feel like you deserve it. And that is a thank you, David. Thank you. Thank da you, David. Thank you, David. David. You deserve it, sir. Pleasure is all my eyes. Huh. The, uh, the love of what you're doing comes through, Pete. Absolutely. And, you know, I'm going to have Greg Berger on the show next week. Uh, you know, definitely going to have fun. Like, I mean, I've had so much fun working with Oh, you. good. Yeah. I got a hold of Greg. Uh, both Chris and I are going to be uh, hosting that show. We're going to be interviewing uh, Greg Berger next week. And possibly next week, I'm going to have another uh, guest star, uh, Greg Berg, who voiced uh, Baby Fozzie and Baby Scooter on The Muppet Baby. So I uh, hope to get him uh, very soon. But yeah. All man. right. And this was just a total honor and pleasure. I mean, thank you not only for this interview, uh, Mr. Eccles, but also thank you for those childhood memories you gave both Chris and I uh, growing up on Nickelodeon in the 90s. It was my pleasure, guys. And good to meet you, too. Good to meet you, too, sir. You have an awesome night, Chris. You yourself have an awesome night. Thank you again. You, too, Chris. <laughs> Take it easy, Dave. Bye-bye.